Howdy, Tubal Cain again. I'd like to say a special hello to my brother Jan out in Cody, Wyoming. Howdy, Jan. Uh, today I'd like to tackle the job of uh, putting a woodruff keyway into a shaft. The other day I showed how to make a, a regular straight keyway, but a woodruff key, of course, is sometimes called a half moon key. And they come in many different sizes, as shown by this uh, set of keys here. And uh, those are typically used in proportional to the size of the shaft. That is, if it's a small shaft, you'll be using a small woodruff key. If it's a large shaft, just the opposite. Now we got a 5 8 shaft here, so I've chosen uh, a standard one which would be uh, 7 8 and then it's 3 16 thick. Now you have to have the appropriate cutter in order to do that. And uh, cutters come in many different sizes, and there's a set of them. I don't know if it's a complete set, but you have to choose the correct size. And in this case, that is the one that we're going to use. And uh, my keyway here, a 3 8 uh, or a 3 16 by 7 16 is also sometimes called uh, simply a size 11. Now you can look up all these dimensions and the depth of the keyway in your machinery handbook. Now uh, when we use this cutter we're going to be cutting in from the side rather than from the top. So when we set this up on the Bridgeport mill we have to locate uh, the distance from the end of the shaft and we have to find uh, the center of the shaft, but this time we're finding the center from the top and then moving down and then moving in to the correct depth. So I'll meet you at the Bridgeport Mill presently. Before we start machining, just a couple notes about the Bridgeport Mill so that uh, you understand some of the terminology that I'm using. The uh, longitudinal feed this way is called the x-axis, which would be moved with uh, the crank on either end of the table. When we talk about the y-axis, we're talking about the cross feed, or in and out, and that is, of course, done by uh, this crank. And then the z-axis is up and down, and uh, that is sometimes also called the knee, and we're making that setting with this, uh, the big crank here. So that's the knee setting. And uh, this entire part of the milling machine right here is referred to as the knee. I'm touching it with my foot. And that goes up and down. Sometimes the z-axis uh, could be uh, the vertical feed on the, uh, the head or the quill. But uh, I usually consider it to be the knee. And that... Uh, those are the coordinates that would be used if it was a numerical controlled machine. So remember X, Y, and Z. Also be sure and wear your safety glasses at all times when you do any of these operations. I'm wearing mine right now. Okay, there's a couple adjustments that we have to make. First we're going to uh, set the depth that is how far we are going down because we want to be on the center of the shaft. Now to find the center of the shaft we're going to come down and we're going to uh, put some tape around the shaft and we're going to touch the tape and then we know that we're on the edge. I know I've told you a lot of things about edge finders but that's how we're going to find the, uh, the edge of this. And then we'll back off a little bit and then we're going to go down 406 thousands. And the way we found that is uh, the, uh, we want to go half the thickness of the cutter, that's a 3 16 cutter, so half of that's 3 30 seconds, and then the radius of this 5 8 shaft, of course, is 5 16, so you add the two together, and we have a total of 13 30 seconds, which equals 406 thousandths deep. So we'll do that first. We're going to turn the machine on. And I'm going to raise the knee now until I touch the tape. And there 
there you can see that I have touched it just barely. And I'll go about a couple extra thousands to allow for the thickness of the tape. And now I'm going to feed the knee. I'm going to zero that uh, power out on the z-axis and I'm going to feed vertically 406,000. Okay, that's done. I had to move the camera temporarily because the tripod was in the way of that crank. So I've uh, raised the table 406 thousandths. And now, since this is just a sample piece, I'm not too concerned about where the keyway is located in the shaft as far as in and out, but you will need to locate that too. It might be an inch from the end, might be three quarters of an inch from the end, or wherever you want it. And now, similarly, I'm going to come in until I touch the tape, so I am moving the y-axis in until the tape is touched. That is done, and now I'm zeroing out the collar. And now all I do is uh, feed in the y-axis 215 thousandths, and that dimension was uh, found in the machinist handbook for that size key and that shaft. So a little bit of oil on this. Now this is a plunge cut, and it won't take very long because we're just going in 215 thousandths. And I'm using my digital readout for that, but of course you could use the graduated collar as well. Here we go. It's really a sharp cutter. I think it's a brand new one. We're already in a hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand, so we're just going to go in another fifteen, and there we are. I know you can't see that because it's on the digital readout, but now I'm backing it off, turning the machine off, and I'm going to uh, take this over to the bench and show you the finished product here momentarily. Now. Uh, the setup that I use here to hold the shaft is the same as I used for the last uh, demonstration. It's just held in two V-blocks uh, against the fixed jaw on top of a parallel. Be sure that everything is clean when you uh, install any working device. No chip, no dirt, no nothing. And tap it down gently with a brass hammer or lead hammer as you're doing that. Now, if you take all these steps and uh, you're very precise about things, you end up with good results. Otherwise, garbage in, you got garbage out. Okay, there's the finished uh, Woodruff Keyway. We'll hold the Half Moon Key. I did strike it with a file and took the burr off and blew it out. There wasn't much of a burr, but then we can uh, try our key, see how it fits in there and tap her down a little bit. This cutter also needs to be sharp or you're going to run into problems when you try to uh, uh, put your key in there. But that's what a uh, Woodruff key keyway and key looks like. And then on the other side is the straight key that I made the other day. And there's a, if you haven't watched that video, be sure and do that. So now you know how to make both a straight keyway Sometimes it's called a key seat or a woodruff keyway or key seat. Now, be sure and watch my many other videos which contain uh, similar operations, but one of my next videos will be to put the uh, matching keyway into a pulley, and I'll be using a brooch to do that. So you may want to watch that one as well. This is Tubal Cain saying so long for now.